Can you hear the lovely pitter patter of the rain here? Today I want to talk a little bit about the Druids and who they really were. There are all sorts of strange ideas about them. I've often heard people accuse the ancient Druids of performing human sacrifices. Now did they really do that or were they more like the hippies we often think of them, kind of the nature lovers and people who are trying to connect with nature? Well I think it's pretty well known that they were basically the intellectual elite of their time. But who really were they? And what can we know about them and what can't we? I'm going to try and explain a little bit about them from what we actually know. They were more than just priests. They served as judges, teachers and even advisors to kings. Imagine a kind of a blend of a philosopher, a scientist and a spiritual leader. That was your average druid. But there were actually different kinds of druids, each with their own roles as well. Some of those roles overlapped and they're not all, they didn't all have formal training, but they would have been considered to wield magic. So first of all, the general druids, they handled law, education and religious rituals. They often interpreted omens and maintained the community's connection with the divine. They also acted as advisors to kings or important nobles and they were held in very high esteem in society. And they weren't only just men, there were druidesses too, because women also held very significant positions. And even if you look into Irish mythology, figures like Scawhawk were known for their magical abilities, their healing and their prophecy. Scawhawk in particular was even said to have trained the great Ulster hero Cúchulainn. The Philly in particular, they're the poets, they really interest me because their power was in their words. And I think that's really interesting because even now today, we can see the power of words. We can see how important it is to choose the right word at the right time, how it can cause offence, how it can lift somebody up or take somebody down. We can see the power of propaganda, for example, the power of misinformation and how those things can be used for evil. We can also see the power of words in the creation of peace and here in Ireland we know all about that. So bearing all that in mind, you can understand where people will get the idea that the filly, the filla, would have power through his words and that that would be seen as quasi-magical, that it wasn't just a poem, it had the ability to captivate to, and to spellbind people. And I still think that if you think about a really good song or um, a really well-written speech, for example, how powerful those words can be. So I can see how that might resonate with people in the form of thinking it might be magical. And I think today when we're faced with so much misinformation, propaganda, everything else online, and we really need to engage our critical thinking skills, we can use our own kind of inner magic to engage those skills and use the filler as our muse to maybe see through the good from the bad. And I think that there is, you know, that takes learning. And that was the great thing about the filler and the Druids in general. They were the learned people. They were the ones who understood these things. They studied for years. Of course, central to Druidic belief was a profound connection to nature. They worshipped in sacred groves. They revered trees. In Europe in particular, it was generally oaks that they revered. And in Ireland, it tended to be rowans. And they believed that every element of nature had a spirit. And this respect for nature still resonates with modern neo-pagans. Druids saw nature as a living, breathing entity and aimed to live in harmony with it. I always felt that there was a special reverence to the rowan trees here in Ireland and maybe it was the blood red berries and the symmetry of their leaves that inspires so much intrigue. The rowan was also associated with protection, wisdom and courage. Sometimes it was planted near homes in order to ward off evil spirits and they were used in various magical and even medicinal practices. For example, those red rowan berries were thought to have protective powers and they could be used in 
rituals to ensure safety during journeys. Now this reminds me very much of the kind of blessings we still have today that are still very common here in Ireland, where you might, if you got a new car, for example, have an elder relative come out and sprinkle it with holy water to try and keep you safe. And I think that's very reminiscent of these more ancient customs. Of course, Druids were at the heart of festivals like Samhain, Imbolc, Bjaltna and Lunasa, marking the changing seasons in Ireland. These celebrations weren't just about community gathering, they were deeply spiritual events and Druids there performed rituals, they might offer sacrifices or communicate with the other world. Medieval texts often described them as wielders of powerful magic and trusted advisors as I mentioned. So figures like Kapad, who advised King Conor Magnassa and other mighty magicians were highly important. Now, if you look at Greek and Roman authors and historians, they often portrayed Druids very negatively. Even Julius Caesar depicted them as barbaric and he emphasised that they used to do human sacrifices. So where did people get the idea that the Druids were barbarians capable of eating children and burning people and all the rest? Again, we're going back to propaganda. If you go back to ancient Greece, ancient Rome, these people had an interest, a vested interest in conquering the Druids and in conquering the Celts. And one way that they wanted to do that was by dehumanising their opponents, their enemies. And we still see this today. We still see it today in some very familiar cases where they will throw out accusations about people that can't be proven and it gets written down in the history books regardless of whether it's true or not. So that also happened to the Druids. So we can learn certain amount from the likes of the Greeks who did in fairness and the Romans who had a, a trade arrangement with Ireland but never actually conquered Ireland and Ireland was never part of the Roman Empire for example but they did have some knowledge but a lot of it was very coloured by their own political means so I think there's something definitely to be learned from that and again we're back to the power of language and how it can place a curse on a person or it can place a blessing and that can go for a whole peoples including the pagans and the druids of ancient Ireland. Back in the early 5th century, Christian missionaries arrived in Ireland. They faced resistance from the Druids, who held significant roles, naturally enough. Now, despite the church's efforts, Druids persisted for centuries, gradually losing prominence with the spread of Christianity. Many Druidic practices were either suppressed or absorbed into the new religion. Early Christian churches were often built on or near Druidic sacred sites. Festivals like Samhain evolved into All Saints Day or Halloween, while Imbolc became St. Bridget's Day. This blend of traditions shows how syncretism created a unique mixing of cultures, rather than an outright replacement. It's kind of like how modern holidays often incorporate elements from different traditions to create something brand new and meaningful. Every St. Patrick's Day, I hear the same thing, online in particular, normally from people who aren't from Ireland, calling it All Snakes Day and similar things like that. Now, I get where that comes from because obviously there's the story about how St. Patrick banished the snakes from Ireland. And some people have uh, interpreted this as being quite literal in that they see it as... Patrick having ethnically cleansed the pagans and the druids from Ireland. Now, this is really not correct at all. And the whole story about the driving the snakes out wasn't even written in St. Patrick's time. That came long, long, long after he died in a hagiography that was written by people who revered him and wanted to big him up as this fantastic saint and that he did all sorts of crazy miracles like raising the dead and everything else. So that whole story anyway is nonsense. But the fact that St. Patrick did bring Christianity, well, he was one of the many missionaries who is said to have brought Christianity to Ireland. And the way it was done, in fact, was more through syncretism. And that would have been where the culture, the existing culture of paganism was really blended quite naturally with Christianity, the new religion of the time. Now, I'm not saying that was the right thing to do, but I'm saying what it wasn't was an ethnic cleansing. You might wonder why Irish Druids outlasted their counterparts in other parts of Europe. 
Well, it's mainly due to Ireland's geographic isolation on the edge of Europe. The Romans never invaded Ireland. That allowed the Druidic traditions to persist much longer compared to like Gaul or Britain, where Roman influence led to the decline of Druidic practices much earlier. This isolation preserved many aspects of their culture and that allowed them to adapt and evolve over time. Archaeological evidence shows that some Druidic practices continued from the Iron Age into the early medieval period. For example, Druids used certain sites for ceremonies and places like Tara and Ishnach have many archaeological finds that show their importance. And when we look at the physical evidence at these sites, we can get a clearer picture of what Druidic practices were really like and their role in ancient Irish society. And that sort of evidence might include altars that would have been used for sacrifices, tools maybe for divination, and the remains of ceremonial structures. It shows that Druids were deeply involved in religious and social activities, performing rituals that were crucial to their communities. These findings help us to understand that while myths often exaggerate, there were real tangible practices that played a significant part in daily life and spiritual beliefs. Irish mythology and medieval texts provide a rich depiction of Druids, describing them as powerful, magical figures involved in major events and rituals. And these stories can be quite romantic and they blend historical facts with mythical elements and showing Druids as both revered and feared, from the epic tales of the Ulster Cycle to the mythological exploits of the Thuha de Danon, Druids are portrayed as central figures in the spiritual and social fabric of ancient Ireland. The Druids were crucial figures in Irish mythology and society, representing a bridge to our ancestral past. They remind us of the importance of living in harmony with nature, the power of ritual and tradition, and the timeless quest for knowledge and spiritual growth. Their legacy continues to inspire and intrigue us, and maybe it's their mystery that keeps us wondering. And it does offer a window into a world where magic and reality really were deeply intertwined. So what can we learn from the Druids, the ancient Druids? Well, there's a lot we don't know, and a lot we won't ever know, because it is a bit patchy. But my takeaway from it is to have a respect for nature and there's a lot to be learned in that today in particular when we've got the climate crisis and everything else facing us that we really do need to respect our world and the nature surrounding us and to see the beauty and simplicity in things and to value our life that's one lesson for me and the other one is of course about the power of language and how important words can be so even just those two takeaways they're the things that resonate most deeply with me and I'd love to know what resonates with you from the Druids and those ancient uh, rituals and ancient peoples that seem to have left a very lasting legacy, even if it is a little bit mysterious. So thanks a million for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this. Come visit me on my YouTube channel. I'm also on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I'm on, what am I on? Uh, TikTok. Um, I've got a load of places where my podcast is available too. So come join, subscribe, do all the things and share it around with your friends. Slán!